<laughs> Welcome to the Revel Fitness Podcast, episode number three for July 22nd, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well today's topic is practice. And we're talking about that today because it has become a really important issue for you. So I want you to tell why, why you wanted practice to be the third thing we talk about. Well, it's not so much as an important issue. It's just that I have found that it is the most critical thing in anything that you do. And what I mean by that is you don't get anywhere without practice, but nobody ever tells you that. Like we always think of practice in terms of... Uh, like learning a skill or like well i guess that that is what it is <laughs> but like in terms of like being good at like say guitar or basketball or something like that and um basically anything that you do is practice whether it's walking talking reading writing <laughs> but like so when you're a baby right you don't know how to walk, you don't know how to talk, you don't know how to do anything. But as a baby, what you do is you just practice. Even though you're terrible at it, you just keep doing it and keep doing it until you're suddenly able to do it. But nobody ever tells you that that's how it works when you become an adult too. Anything that you wanna do, it's just practice and how much you do it and how consistent you are about it. Okay, so when you're talking about that, you're not just talking about like, like learning a dance or right. or something like that. But can you give some specific examples of some non-traditionally, something that people wouldn't traditionally know they have to practice for, that some realization you've had? The best one, and I think this is what you were leading to, is compassion. So practicing kindness and compassion towards people. Like it's really easy to say just, oh yeah, I'm just not a very nice person. Nobody ever thinks that. I mean, Maybe more people should. <laughs> but I've thought that many times about myself. It's like, man, I'm way too judgmental. I'm way too short-tempered with people and way too, you know, just overall not the coolest person to talk to sometimes. But I really don't want that to be the way. And the way to get out of that is to every time that you do it, you're like, oh, that's a mistake. In the same way, like, if you're playing basketball and you miss a shot, like, oh, well, that that's not the right way to shoot because clearly I didn't make it. So let me try again and practice until I can make it. So like in the same way, every time you act unkind towards somebody, you practice trying to be kind to them. And do you, do, in, in that specific instance, do you, as soon as you're unkind to someone, do you, do you know you've been unkind? Usually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very funny that that's the example that you should bring up because I just yesterday listened to, um, I'm listening, they're doing that 21 day Deepak Chopra um, meditation that um, Ronnie Brar introduced us to. And yesterday in the introduction, Deepak Chopra said, um, every time you resist something or you think something is wrong or something is, you know, you're, you're determining it as a negative thing, that is your inner self, your true self, giving you an opportunity to learn something. Like it's going, oh, oh you know, that's, that's not how you truly are. You are truly kind and compassionate and loving. Oh. Um, and, and so then I, I just wonder if that's, if you, if you hear, if you're quiet enough to hear your, your inner self more often, if you can't then intentionally practice being more more kind i think you can well just basically the reason i want to talk about practice is because i really like maybe it's optimistic sometimes but i really believe that you can do anything like and not in the sense you can fly like you could turn into a car and fly get on the freeway <laughs> that's a key and peel <laughs> sketch but um i really think that anything that you want to accomplish that is in your hands, right? So you say, I want to be like a great, I want to be like, I want to be that person that I've always wanted to be. I feel like it's really possible. And I think part of it is that I just refuse to live in a world where that's not possible, that you can do anything. And the only, like I joke about it sometimes, but I'm actually kind of serious, is that my religion is practice because it is the one most consistent thing I've ever seen, like out of all the things in life, like it is the one constant that you can never 
that you can always rely on. Like the sun and going up and down in the sky, that's pretty constant too. Like it is that constant to me that if you practice something, you will get better at it. It's just you have to actually practice it and know what you're practicing towards. Yeah, I think intentional practice. <laughs> intentional practice. Intentional practice. Yeah. practice. Like, like sometimes we practice something over and over unintentionally, and then that just becomes what we think is the way something is. Like, I'm trying to think of a good example of it right now. I can't. But there are many things in my life that I, that I have thought, oh, this is the way things are. Or, and I hear that from people all the time. Oh, that's just the way I am, or that's just the way things are, or that's the way it's always. That's the way I've always done it. Um, well, that's a that's a going back to our habit discussion. But it's a habit. But you def, you you got that habit by practicing doing it that way, or believing that it was that way, and just allowing it to happen. So once you can intentionally practice, then I think your practice becomes so much more effective. Like. Um, food's a good example like I've been practicing eating cleaner I'm still not very you know I'm not 100% at it I'm so much better than I was before but as time goes by I keep practicing you know how to how to cook cleanly um, and now if there's any ingredients that I that I that are clean in the in the house I can make something and something that'll taste good but that just took practice um, and but practicing intentionally and not being afraid to fail, and I think that goes back to what you said about babies. Yeah, they're not afraid to fail. No one's going to make fun of them. No, you know they they don't they don't have this idea that oh I have to do it right the very first time. Nope, they're like oh I tried to walk I fell down. Oh I'm getting up again. I'm getting up again. And I can remember as a kid learning to to do a a, a walkover like a, a flip mm-hmm. yeah, you know yeah. but a slow one in gym in high school. And every day in gym, I would just go in and try and try and try. But it was gym class, so I knew it was okay to try it there. I'm not sure I would have done that somewhere else. I might have. But that's when I did it. And then when I finally got it, I was so, so happy and, you know, felt so accomplished, even though I think it took like a whole year because I was kind of chubby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we should, uh, this kind of becoming a running theme of our podcast, but it's the definitions of things that are kind of like the first key to understanding them. But like practice as it's traditionally framed, like I said earlier, it's just like learning specific tasks, you know, like learning guitar. But it's it's applies to everything. It's like whatever you want to do, it's just doing that thing over and over again until you get it, right? And I think that is the biggest stumbling block towards people when they get older is we don't even try anymore. It's not even that like we don't try for long enough, it's we literally don't try. How many times have you heard people say, I can't sing, I can't draw, I, I can't, can't dance? dance. <laughs> That's the biggest one. <laughs> it's like, let me, let me tell you a secret. Like, this is you, if you're watching this, you need to listen to this. I did not dance from the time I was 12 years old to 22 years old, like literally not one time. Yeah, I was there. I remember that. <laughs> One time while I was in front of the mirror, I, I was like, well, can I dance? And I tried it, and I was so embarrassed by it, I stopped. And it was just me in the room. Like, it's unbelievable. This notion that we have that somebody's going to judge us or something is totally justified. Like, it's <laughs> it totally to- justified. It is true. People will judge you. <laughs> I understand. Like, it's difficult. But that's the first step towards getting to where you want to be at anything, is to get over what people think you know and it's such a cliche at this point it's like it's kind of hard to even say it but it's true man that's like that's the biggest stumbling block people are going to say things people are going to be like oh why are you doing that are you a little old for that or whatever Whatever. it happens to be you know but if it's something you want to do well i guess that's the other thing is if your motivation is just to hear what other people say about it don't do it anyway. You're wasting your time. Like, there's no reason to be good at something just because other people will like it. In fact, there's a funny story. There's a Smash Brothers player. So, the, probably the most sma- popular Smash Brothers in the competitive scene. Is that a video game? Yes, yeah, Smash Brothers is a video game. Thank it's a you. fighting video game. It's a one-on-one game where you fight each other. <clears throat> and uh, the most popular one is called Melee, and the newest one is called smash four 
So Smash 4, there's the best player in the world right now. He's basically undefeated. People keep telling him, oh, you should play Melee instead. And finally he was like, look, I shouldn't play Melee because I am not, I don't have my heart in it the way Melee players do. They have their heart in it. Them playing it is what's good for that game. Like in more power to them, I love watching it, I love the game, but this not my heart's not in it. So if I tried to do what you guys want me to do, I would dilute that scene and make myself a worse player because I'm not enjoying it as much. So he was like, I'm sticking to this and that's what I want to do. And I was like, good for you, man. Like, you got to do what it is that pleases you and gives other people value. If you're not doing that, you're just wasting your time and you're worrying, you're going after some ephemeral thing like public opinion. Yeah. And I think there's maybe getting off a little bit of the the subject of practice, but not exactly, is that oftentimes we there is something that we know but just just the act of doing it, even if nobody sees it, nobody does it, nobody's you know, you don't even tell anybody you're doing it, but it gives you joy and satisfaction and fulfillment. But so often once you get to do that and then you do share it with someone then then they're like oh you should publish that or you should compete you should compete oh yeah like as if just doing it for the fun of it is not enough and i remember i'll use ballroom dancing as an example i started taking ballroom dancing and you know how much i love chris my instructor i just think he's the most wonderful guy and anyone ever has a chance to take ballroom classes from chris ford you should do it um but um at one point when i'd gotten better he brought up the whether I should go to a competition and at first I really rebelled I was like no I don't do this so I can be better than somebody else but if you do the competitions you get to dress up in a pretty dress and yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you look, look really cool and so I, I, I agreed to do it and and then I got there and I was like well I don't really care if I win I just want to go do it for the fun of it and then I realized if I didn't do well in the preliminary rounds I had to stop dancing so then I wanted to do really well so I could yeah. I could keep doing it but the whole time I kept coming back to why I'm doing it. And, and I think we lose that in other things. Someone writes a, a good poem and then someone praises them. Then they want to do it because of the praise, not because they want to do it. I got a really good example of that, our YouTube channel, right? It is really easy to get caught up in... What is your YouTube channel? Adventure Archives, youtube.com slash adventure archives. Actually, you can go to bit.ly slash adventure archives, but this never mind uh, <laughs> the, um, it's really easy to get caught up in view count and also in subscriber count and like this is something that really bothers me but the other guys in the group they always focus way too much on that like in our group chat it's always like oh we got 10,000 views of this now and then we got this many subscribers now I'm like guys stop paying attention to that and work on a video don't do that like if you're if you're if what you're getting out of this is satisfaction from having lots of views that's fine but that is not what i get out of this and the reason that i do it is because i love making those videos and i love interacting with the people i love it when we get comments and stuff but i hate this focus on like like it's not worthy unless you get a lot of views right yeah it's like i think that's why a lot of people don't ever get to the point where they want to be is because they're worried too much about um well here's a great example i used to be like when i was younger i played basketball all the time you know about this i tried to play semi-professional basketball but my goal in it from the beginning like now that i think about it, it was never because i loved playing basketball it was because i wanted the recognition of being the best and if your goal is that I feel like the universe will always work against you. Like, cause I used to like, I'd be going, doing so well that I'd get sick. Doing so well, I'd hurt my ankles, <laughs> whatever it was, you know? Yeah. And I feel like the universe will work against you. Like if your intentions are not pure, I don't like, yeah, I guess that's what it is. If your intentions aren't like, if they're for selfish, stupid, meaningless things like recognition, it's all, you're always going to have a tough time. Yeah. Um, or you will succeed, but you will not be happy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. that's another possibility. Because um, there are lots of people who, by brute force, 
for who knows what the reasons are, become really good at something they can't stand doing. Yeah. Um, Even like in good things. I read once about, uh, it was in a Ken Robinson book, he was talking about a concert pianist. And then one day, she's a concert pianist. Plays like one of the best in the world. And she suddenly realized, I don't like doing this. She became a book publisher <laughs> or like an editor for books at a publishing company. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised because you, you can ignore your inner self. You can ignore your, your, your true self and do something else and become really good at it. You might even have talent in it, but it doesn't mean that it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you happy. Um, and, and not everybody's lucky enough to be like, like we are right now. We, not that we're making a living at it yet, but, but we do. Our business is something that we love doing. Yeah. Um, but if, if we were doing it, which for a period of time we were doing it, not at the beginning. In the beginning we did it because we just wanted to do it. And, and people flocked to the studio. Then suddenly we got it in our minds that we had to make a lot of money at it. And, and or any should, money. Or any money. <laughs> we had to make some money at it. And the harder we tried focusing on making money, the worse things got. And then you got sick and I got injured. And, and now we're back. And, and well, that's, that's another good example. Is when you teach a class, especially a Zumba class, you are the center of attention. That recognition, I don't think you've ever had a problem with this, but I know I have, and I know other Zumba instructors have this problem, is you get hungry for that recognition rather than for the fun of it. So it's really hard to keep that balance of being like, you have to like kind of like cut that you off at the practice. source. You have to practice. There you go. We're right back to practice. <sighs> because the truth is that sometimes when when I have a, you know, either a small class or just the opposite, a really big class where I can't make, I can't make as much individual contact with my students while I'm doing it. It's a little harder for me to have fun doing it. Um, or if I have a really small class and I can't get, I can't get people engaged, which I, I almost always can. And then when that happens, it doesn't take me very long to go, oh, you know what, but I love doing this anyway. I'm dancing. Yeah. And this yeah. is good music. This is good choreography. And Usually, when I stop thinking about that and I intentionally just enjoy what I'm doing, it fixes whatever the problem was. You know, then people are more into it, or yeah. you know, it's. But but I have to. I have to. I had to practice that. I had to practice going. Yeah, sometimes I'm not going to have very many students, or sometimes my students are going to need my a lot of my help to get going, or they're going to they're going to need something more than the normal to engage them, or like. Um, I've had many students in, in all of my classes that have been so intimidated by the whole idea of dancing or following somebody else. And they're just like, I can't do it. I'm not coordinated. I'm not this or that. And that takes a whole different side of me. It takes my, um, my, my comforter side, like to make people feel comfortable to make mistakes to not do it, to make something up, to to let themselves try and practice. And then suddenly, you know, six months down the road, they're like, you know, grooving away. Yeah. And it doesn't it doesn't mean that everybody gets, you know, rhythm and could be a famous dancer or anything. It just means that they are more in touch with themselves and able to able to do what they wanted to do in the first place. Yeah, I <laughs> I don't have a specific thought about that, but what you said made me think of something else. Was one time I was teaching a kid's class, and we were there's a cool move that I wanted to teach them, and I, I broke it down for a second, and then I was like, okay, let's practice it. We practiced literally for four seconds. I mean, maybe it was two seconds. It was literally for four seconds, and one of them was like, oh, I can't do this. It's too hard. So they just stopped trying. And that I just wanted to bring up earlier about how giving up too early is usually the biggest hindrance to getting anything to happen. And in the same way, like your students, like the ones who are super intimidated, it's like, it's hard to even get that ball rolling, but it's kind of like, um, pushing a big boulder, right? Mm -hmm. It was like at the beginning, pushing the boulder. Lots of inertia. Hard. Can't get it moving. And then once you get it going, actually it's really accurate with that because it's like doing it on a flat surface. You push, and then, oh, practice. Oh, I got a perfect. Okay, so <laughs> practice. What practice is like as far as how difficult it is or how it works 
practice works like this. You have a big boulder at the starting line and at the finish line, and the finish line is, you'll never make it. It's a, con it's a journey, okay? So, well anyways, progress, okay? That direction is progress. This direction is anti-progress. It's like a big boulder. You push it, and when you first start pushing it, it's really hard to get going. Once you started getting rolling, then you can just kind of walk with it, right? But as soon as you stop, that boulder stops too. And then when you start back up again, you have to push the boulder again. And then so different things have a different level of incline, right? Mm -hmm. So certain things that you're really talented at, it'll have a downwards incline. You can just start pushing the boulder or the boulder's moving on its own. You just run after it. <laughs> like, oh, that's, this is such a great analogy. It's <laughs> a really good analogy. Actually. And then things you're not talented are like this, like they're an uphill struggle. So the only way to get anywhere and to in fact not get worse is to keep pushing the boulder up the hill. But it's probably more like that, you yeah. know, it's not this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not vertical. There'll be very few walls. Yeah. yeah, very few walls. And, and part of, I think part of succeeding at anything is deciding what are the things that you want to, that are important enough to you to push and, and what are the things that really bring you joy and, and don't be fooled into thinking that the things will bring you joy will be the things that are easy for you. Oh, in fact, it's usually fact, the opposite. It's usually the opposite. The things that are super hard are the things that are the most satisfying to actually do, you know? Sorry, I got to check the time real quick. Yeah, it, that struggle is where satisfaction comes from. You need that because if things were easy, if take the basketball example. If I had just made it, who cares? Like... <laughs> Like, really, who cares? Especially if I don't enjoy basketball. I make it. I don't enjoy it. What do I get? Money? And then I just buy a bunch of stuff. And then that works against my whole minimalist aspect. So then I'm, my minimalist aspect is not fulfilled. My, my talent satisfaction is not fulfilled. Nothing's fulfilled. Yeah. Well, it, and that's often the case. It's, I think that's why a lot of people are, are lonely or dissatisfied or whatever is because they really aren't figuring out what 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 their soul what their what their joy is um and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that you have to figure out what's your 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 what fills your soul and do that for a living yeah and but, or it's it's not even one thing it's not yeah you, you're not meant to do just one thing your whole life no i don't i don't think you are i don't think you're necessarily are or aren't but i think that people just don't don't know themselves and they don't they don't give themselves the opportunity i can't believe how many people say and, and i'm going to go back to it i can't dance and and it's really not that they can't dance it's that they either haven't tried or they've tried and they felt uncomfortable or they tried and someone did not respond well to it instead of trying again they just stop um i for me, there's been so many things in my life that I have have tried and learned to do. Um, and sometimes the progress is not pretty. Dance, on the other hand, for me, is one of my talents. You know, I had a downward incline. The yeah. ball got rolling and I can just follow it. But I'm just like anybody else. I get better at it over time. And I'm going to use the example of that one song we do. We both use it. Donde esta, something uh -huh, or another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, it's got a complicated foot pattern. It's got a complicated hand pattern. When you put the two of them together, it's really not easy at first. I don't even remember it anymore. Yeah. Well, you got it like in a couple of days, and you kept going, don't think so much about it. And I was like, yeah, but I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and literally did it in all of my classes, every single class, for two months before I was able to do it in double time. And, and I have students who come into my class now, and we do it once, and they're like, oh, I'm never going to be able to do that. I'm like, okay, I practiced three times a day in a live setting for two months, and I, it took me two months to get it. So you're practicing a little bit, but it's that, you know, they look at me doing it if they weren't there for my two months practice. Now, my students that were there, they saw it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even now, if somebody makes eye contact with me, I might not be able to do it. Um, but they didn't see that. So the new people come in and they see us doing that song and they're like, I'm never going to be able to do that. That just doesn't make any sense to me at all. And when we first started it, that's exactly what I thought. I'm like, I cannot get my feet and hands to go in that many different directions. It just doesn't, it doesn't compute. 
But the practice over and over and over now it's kind of fun like put my little flare on it yeah, you yeah. know it's it's amazing what my brain can learn if i allow it well it's also especially if you do it in class that's not really practicing in the sense that like it's not buckling down and saying okay what is this exactly okay let me break it down let me try the first one okay boom got it okay next one i go up okay let me try that again down up I mean, it, it's still practice because you can obviously learn it. But, like, that's, like, if you really want to get good at something, it takes that focused attention of saying, yes, I want to get better at that. And every time you do it, you try to get better at it. And then you try to, like, analyze it and inspect it. So it's not just doing something over and over again because your brain's going to go to automatic whatever it can already do. And my drum teacher used to always tell me my drum and piano teacher they used to always tell me it's like the most important thing is to practice slowly first get everything else perfect do speed later but speed is like this is the first thing i try to go for it's I, like, I just want to do it i'm gonna do it let's, let's go faster faster i've always been remember, about doing everything you, fast you get a new piece of music with the piano and you just right away try to play what you heard on there and i was like how can you do that don't you need to go slow first but i don't like it that way you make all kinds of mistakes all and, kinds, and not only that is you actually end up practicing your mistakes. Yeah. And then your practice, your mistakes get more ingrained, which is problematic. <laughs> um, well, let's go back to what you think, though, then about then babies learning to walk. Because I'm not sure that they are, well, maybe they are. They are analyzing what worked the last time. I have no idea whether they and are I don't or know. Not. That's, a good question, That's a good question. But I think it's that those type of things are self-correcting. Because if you're trying to walk and you fall, it, it clearly doesn't work. The other things in life are much more nebulous. So you like, like say nobody likes you. <laughs> you're like, but I'm doing all the things that I always do. It's like, I, I think those should work. So why aren't people liking me? It's, it's like we have a convincer inside of us that can convince us that what we're doing is okay. It's kind of like the... the it, it's kind of good for mental health because it makes you, no, you're not the problem. Don't worry. It's everybody else. Although then your judger comes in and judges you on the other side and goes, no, you were wrong. Uh, that, that's, <laughs> that's the two that's balancing too, yeah. sides of you, the convincer and the judger. Um, <laughs> so maybe there's just no convincer and judger. So it just, the baby's mind is using rational. Yeah. Or maybe the brain at that point works completely differently. Yeah. And it just would, absorbs yeah. whatever is around I'm it. just thinking about even... The weirdest thing, but like a balance ball, you know, those those big exercise balls. And I used to have one and I can remember I used to try to sit on it and raise my legs and and just balance on it. And when I first started, it was impossible, but I never really thought about why it didn't work. But I just kept doing it until finally my body adjusted. Yeah. You know, and then suddenly I was balancing and maybe it's like that. But Well, yeah, I think maybe the mental sphere and the physical sphere are different. Learning physical things, it's just repetition it's until it feels right. And then mental things, it's you got to actually analyze it even harder because you think you're doing the right thing, but you're not doing the right thing. But sometimes it's unclear. Like, it's unclear what, whether... So do you have any goals right now of things that you want to get better at, that you intentionally want to practice? No, but that's also... Right now, it's like... I heard somebody say it recently. He's like... He's one of the minimalist guys. His name's Joshua Fields Milburn. But... He talks about going in a direction. Don't set specific goals. And I found just myself, whenever I set specific goals, I usually fail them. And especially if I set too many. Although, I, I will say right now that one of my goals and things I've been practicing is going to bed earlier. And I just practice every day. And it's getting easier. It's getting a lot easier for whatever reasons. But when I go to bed at night, like I'm no longer thinking, God, I still want to do so many things. I just go to bed, and then when I get up, I start doing them. And I don't know what has been the change exactly. Maybe but it's just that you're doing it and you're practicing. Practicing it, yeah, maybe. Maybe um, maybe your body is going, oh, and, and your brain are, are shutting off going, oh, I get to do that in the morning, so I'm yeah, not going to worry about it any morning. But overall, like, yeah, it's funny that I should bring up practice because that's my, like, my favorite thing. I guess it's just every day I do my practice, but I don't have a conscious thought about it, like, stuff like this i love doing stuff like this and i do it every day make videos whatever and i love doing it and that is my practice and i don't have but when i do have specific goals towards getting better at one thing 
I do do that. Like, oh, I want to be better at this. So then when I think about it a little bit and like I try to find solutions to it, I think that's actually a really fun thing to do is figure out what, like, I think that's another thing is like you have to examine what is it, what are the things I want to get better at? I want to get better at having my kitchen clean. I want to get better at being able to eat when I need to eat and have food ready. And it's like thinking about what exactly is the problem? Why am I not able to do that? And then think of solutions to that. And then and then practice. That's those. like the first stage of practice, right? Oh. Is figuring out what the problem is and then thinking of solutions to it. And I think you can figure out solutions to lots of things, but yeah. And I, I think, I think the f- the first step though is believing deep down in your bones and in your soul that you have the power to change things. Uh-huh. You have the power to change how you are in the world. And and I think a lot of people don't believe that yet that the world happens and and things happen to them not that they can engage in activity that would change that even even how other people respond to you um like if you if you think someone's responding to you negatively most people at some point in their life if not all their lives think oh they don't like me or I did something wrong or there's, you know, there's something wrong with this relationship. And instead of deciding, well, I want us to have a good relationship, so I'm just going to have a good response to them no matter what. Because you don't really know what's going on in the other person's mind. You don't know, um, you don't know what they're really thinking. Well, also, so that, you can't control what they do. Yeah, exactly. So you just have to control your reaction. And then if it keeps coming up, just figure out ways to get out of their reaction or get out of interactions with yeah. them. Yeah, you know? and well, and you and you have to set you stop. You need to stop having a reaction to that, whatever it might be, um, because you you're right. You can only control your own behavior, but it takes practice to not let someone else's behavior or statements or attitudes or actions change you and what you want to do. So, as we said at the very beginning. You know, people are going to judge you. That's what human beings do. Um, but you can practice not accepting that judgment as, as a fact. You know, just because someone says you don't look good when you're dancing or you didn't do that right, just because they said it doesn't make it true. Yeah. It makes it their opinion. And so if you, if you absorb that opinion, then, of course, it becomes yours. You can you can not absorb it. You can give it no value at all, or you can hear it from a number of sources and go, "Oh, I might need to change that in myself." But you've got choices. It it's not just because someone says something that it's true, right? Especially if it's about you. You know, some you know, I've been told my whole life I am a Pollyanna, (laughs) and I used to get so mad. I'm like, "No, I'm not." You know, I'm kind of (laughs) cynical. No, I'm not. And and finally, in the last few years, I've I've went. No, 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 no. I I am. I can find the good in every freaking situation. What's that guy on Simpsons? Ned Flanders. Ned Flanders. I am a I'm a female Ned Flanders. You know, <laughs> mosquito bites. Yeah, I like the mm, edge. Fun to scratch. Mm, fun to scratch. <laughs> yeah, I knew there was something like that. But and it's and it's not that I think everything is good, and I can think of some really horrible things. But I can also see there are lessons to be learned in everything that happens, and since they're going to happen, and it is reality, then then I choose to believe that the reason those things happen is for someone, maybe me, maybe someone else, to learn some lesson from okay. it. Okay, you know, this is something I just I thought of in the last two days. Is that what is so, like, I was listening to this one guy. His name is Stefan Molyneux. He has some good ideas, but the guy's too angry. Like, he's too angry and too, like, his interactions with people are too, like, it's too caustic. It's, it's like typical talk radio. It's funny. We're kind of doing talk radio. <laughs> um, but anyways, the the I was thinking about it, and I was like, what is it that rubs me the wrong way about this? And it's that... What is the fundamental purpose about everything we do, right? Like, what is your guiding principle? Is your guiding principle justice and, like, rightness? Because if it is, it's not always the best route to go down. You're, 
if you want a happy life, your fundamental principle should be, how can I not abandon my values and get along with the most people? And like, how can I be the most compassionate, kind, fun to be around person? Like, I feel like those should be the priorities over things like that. What was making me say that? Ned Flanders. Yeah. Oh, right. So you say, oh, you're a Pollyanna. So what? Like, is does that make you happier? And does that make the people around you happier? Yes. It, does it hurt anybody? 99% of the cases, no. Yeah. Like, so... Yeah, I, I occasionally overlook some signs of something bad coming down the road. Right. But I'm still here. I'm still surviving. And I... I have lived most of my time pretty happy. There have been a few you know, periods of my life that I was not as happy as others, but in general. So I, I have tried to develop a philosophy of living, of, of, ex- of being a human being on this earth at this time that brings me the most joy. Right. Um, I, there, may, there may be other philosophies or ways of looking at things, but I know that if that's what I believed in my soul, I would not be nearly as happy as I am. Now, I find very few reasons to get angry at anyone. I, it's just really hard for me to get upset over someone. If, if someone says something that, I, that hurts my feelings, I might look right at them and go, wow, that kind of hurt my feelings. I wonder, why, I wonder what, what that brought up. Instead of going, you did that to me. How could you be so horrible as to bring that to me? And we've talked about this before, that I have a tendency to take on the blame for things. But I'm, but I'm practicing not doing that. But I still want to have that neutral impact when someone does something that I consider wrong or, or mean to me or mean to someone else. And, and try to find how to be compassionate towards that person. Because I don't believe they want to be that way. Because it's miserable. Yeah. It's miserable. It's totally when miserable. I, when, when I see someone, you know, being angry like your talk show person, you know, there's got to be some motivation behind that. Either that's not his personality at all, but he's willing to, to play that part to make money, or that really is how he feels, but there have been things in his past that have caused him to develop a very angry attitude. And if that's the case, well, either case, I have a lot of compassion for that guy because... It's got to be unhappy. It's got to be unhappy to give up your personality just for money. And it's got to be hard if you've been damaged or traumatized so much that you feel that it's appropriate to spew out that venom. Well, he's not venomous. Oh, okay. He's just like... But anyways, there's a million different reasons why you could do any of yeah. that stuff. So, I mean, uh, I guess where I was going with that is just I feel like it's just kind of back to practice. You have to practice how you want to live in the world and how you want to interact with other people. And I think it's, it's worth taking the time to sit down and figure out how do I want to interact with people? Because everybody has like this vague notion of like, oh, I want to be popular and I want to be a good person and all this stuff. But we've never, I mean, lots of people have, but oftentimes we don't sit down and think, how do I go about doing that? And what does that mean exactly? And like, just all these things, like uh, the big problem I have, two big problems I have lately that I am practicing, actually, now that I think about it. One is I'm always, like, looking to get justice for every wrong doing that has been happened, that has occurred to me, you know? Like, I'm like, oh, you did this to me, I gotta write the scales. And it's really not a very nice way of living. I don't like doing it because it just makes me resentful towards people. And, I'm and you like, usually can't write the scales I can't anyway. Write it. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. Or I'm like too like worried about hurting the people's feelings, which is hilarious because they did something wrong to me in my mind. Yet I'm not even willing to do something wrong back to them. I'm just like stew over it. <laughs> but um, also, I want to just. It's actually related to that. So I want to be able to talk to people without getting angry or resentful about it. I mean, like, this is not working because of this. And I need you to either change behavior or this has to like, something's got to change, but I can't keep going on like this. And I'm not going to get resentful or mad or anything, but I don't really know how to do that. I haven't had any practice in it. Yeah. I'm getting plenty of opportunities to practice it. <laughs> You're just I'm not just, taking them. I haven't taken them yet, but that, I'm working <laughs> on that. It's doing that first step of getting over the possible, 
the possibilities of if it goes badly. I mean, that's... Yeah. Well, and and learning to do that, learning to do anything means you have to fail. If, if you could do it perfectly the first time, you wouldn't need to practice. Sure. So it's the same in, in how you interact with people. You just... Like I used to be very afraid of confrontation, which is probably how I became a Pollyanna in the first place because I just don't want the confrontation. Now I can have a very good attitude about it and still have the confrontation. It's just not an angry, victimized, you know, you did this to me or, you know, this happened to me, this, this outside force coming in. No, it's I can still be really happy. I can still have compassion for you. But, but we need to talk about this issue. Right. Um, I actually, I, I had two opportunities to do that. One yesterday, one today. And the, today it got easier. Like I did two of them. And like now it's getting easier for me to just address a topic, not get resentful or like take it personally or anything. Just say, oh, this is a problem. And I don't know how it happened, but I'm just letting you know it's a problem. And then we can try to fix it. Both of them were fine. So that was actually two nice pieces of practice. But that was one thing. That's kind of like that back to that boulder analogy. The beginning is going to be painful. You have to get past the initial pain period and the part that's like, oh, I can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. And yeah. you just want to sit down and just stop. Yeah. You just want to go back to what you already know. Well, the whole um, food and what kind of things you eat are right in line with that. Because anytime you make a, a major change to how you eat, and those people who did the paleo challenge with us or have, you know, I've helped them with their nutritional habits. Um, it is really hard. And it's especially hard if you're trying to eat more cleanly and you, you get rid of the processed foods and stuff because the first few days, you feel like you got the flu. It feels terrible. All those toxins are being, you know, excreted from your body and you're feeling it the whole time. Well, it's time. also you don't have the nice endorphins that you get from eating that food. Yeah. Um, so you have to wait for your body's natural chemical pathways. Yeah, you have to wait pathways to reset. for the non-neurotoxins to give you that high. Um, and, and it happens. It just takes a while. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. And then your body starts going, okay, I'm not going to be poisoned with grains and preservatives and weird stuff that I don't know what to do with. I'm going to get the nutrients that I need. And suddenly it becomes easier and it's sort of a self-propelling until, until you... I don't want to call it falling off the wagon, but until you make a decision to eat something that you know is, is not going to feel good. And that's where, that's where your practice and your habits come in. You know, okay, so I decided to eat cake at this party. Um, and I wake up the next morning, feel like I got a hangover because I feel so terrible, or I ate fish at the fish fry the other day. Oh, you know, you're exactly right. Mm. It is the habits and practices that you've been practicing it becomes your default mode. So when you deviate, it becomes nice to go back to your habits and practices. Exactly. It's like, uh, like I said that in the first episode about cry in the dojo, laugh on the battlefield. It's like you make these, you get all of these good practices so automatic that when you need them, it's just like, boom, I got it right in my hip pocket and I can just go right back to it. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's because that's how I feel now. Um, I, I just started to mention that the specific the fish fry on Sunday, I didn't take the breading off. In 20 minutes, I was sick like a dog and sick for the rest of the evening. But the next morning, I got up, and you can be for sure. I remembered how bad I felt Sunday evening and Monday. I went right back to my old habits, and it took a couple days. But today, I feel really good. Um, yesterday, not that great and Monday I didn't feel very good at all but today I feel really good because I've gotten that out of my system by going back to my previous habit and it wasn't hard like I would prefer not to eat at all than to eat something I know is gonna make me feel like that again so it's just a good default oh I think I like that about wraps it up I yep. just I guess I, I didn't really mention this in the whole thing but this is my fundamental thing about practice is you can always rely on practice and no matter what your situation is take faith take solace in the fact that practice will work if you you just take a little you just can take it on a little bit of faith because i can guarantee you it'll work practice it's going to take more practice or less practice for different things but whatever you want you can make it happen okay then i'm going to tell you this having a practice of meditation 
will help. <laughs> Take it on faith. <laughs> <laughs> the meditation one's a funny thing because right now I just don't want to do it. I can like, tell. I, I don't want to make the time for it. But I, the seed's already there, so I will make the time for it eventually. But right now, it's not on my priority list. Yeah, I'll use my composting uh, analogy. You, it, you've got that seed. Well, you'll, you've been getting the seeds, and they're just rotting in your brain. But eventually, all those seeds will compost and be fertile soil, and <laughs> seed will be planted, and you will grow. <laughs> yeah. Now, that one's a funny one. It's just like... I don't know what the benefit of that is going to be. I've heard the benefit, and I'm also just not placing that very high on my priority list. There's other things, too, that I've got that I want to work on, but they're not on my priority list. And I think that's okay, too. Yeah, you don't I have mean, to do everything like, at once, and you don't have to be perfect. There, well, in fact, you won't be perfect. Yeah. So get that out of your mind. That you're never going to have the perfect life because as human beings— we like to learn new things. We like challenges. So once you've solved all the challenges that you have now, what are you going to do? Yeah, you're, no, your brain will come up with something else. Oh It'll yeah. Go, oh yeah, you could. You know what? We could learn to skydive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> Although that would be a nice life if the only thing that you had to worry about was learning new things. Like, oh, I'm going to learn the guitar this week and become really good at it. There's a guy named Tim Ferriss. He's kind of like one of these super superhuman people who like have done everything <laughs> and like like now it seems like his life is just pushing the limits of human performance like he learned he became a professional ballroom dancer in like four months or something he did I, like that'd be good to research some of that stuff how he did that but anyways that would be a cool life just yeah, like oh, i'm gonna be a, cool be a professional life. ballroom dancer this year next year i'm gonna be a professional basketball player and then next year's <laughs> hockey or something <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, you have cool. Anything to add. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you'll see you next week.